welcome back following the first excellent presentation from Ulitkovsky. Now we have the second presentation, KAI in publishing, a self-confident phrase maker or a terminator by Stefan Meyer. Uh, let me say something about Mr. Meyer. He has a long, a long experience of uh, editor in various um, and w has worked in various advertising companies. In 2016, he founded the Digital Publishing Report, a media platform for expert uh, providers of expert publishers who brings together expert publishers and t terminology experts. And he has such expertise and has so, so much practical experience then, okay, he can only present on the basis of very specific practical examples. That's his strong point. So we're very pleased that Mr. Meyer will be able to throw, throw light on various GPI and AI um, aspects and provide us with, uh, with practical examples of application. Over to you, Mr. Meyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Shoda. Thank you very much for the introduction and for the applause. Now, let's start <clears throat> with a human machine test. Good day. I welcome you to the presentation of the speaker, Stefan Meyer. He will concern himself with the subject of artificial intelligence, publishing, and kit content. And I hope he doesn't get on your nerves. Good presentation of our speaker, Stefan Meyer. He will deal with the topics of artificial intelligence, publishing, and cat content. Hopefully, he won't get on your nerves. 大家好,欢迎您参加Stephen content的主题。我希望他不会让你感到紧张。and I think the, the Mandarin was not that uh, perfect, but it was very charming. This is a, a tool from a German startup company, Animate Me, which they generate uh, on the basis of photography. The rest, uh, language output, is via text input and via translation tools. That's why Mandarin and English were used as the examples. Uh, as Mrs. Schroeder has said, I don't have to say much about myself. Um, Fixel Gum uh, is what is this is relevant because what I will talk about today is uh, my my media past, lots of newspapers, lots of news of. of uh, magazines and the digital publishing report. What we do in in the past, these companies were called publishing houses. Today, media media platforms because we are, work on a primarily digital basis and we are, are involve involve ourselves in digital conferences, newsletters, etc. Above all, the background because we have translated various things into. AI and for examples, some examples that I will present. In the first part, I will look at examples, uh, application scenarios in terms of what medium companies are doing at media companies are doing at present. And then in the second uh, part, I would like go to go back and look at what's going on outside. What is artificial intelligence doing? What are the challenges, copyright problems, etc.? So first of all, to start at what's going on in publishing uh, at, at present, and um, a few basic things concerning the uh, deployment scenarios in publishing. What opportunities uh, do we have for, through the use of AI? What we are constantly hearing is that public, to make publication processes more efficient and more cost effective, i.e. this uh, assisting function of AI, which can facilitate much, in particular in terms of preparation content, but also perhaps in e-commerce, the subject um, uh, oriented towards one person, i.e. personalization, is a very important aspect. Machine learning, AI can be used. So 
what are the various definitions of machine learning, personalization. I won't deal with that, but what what we find out through machine learning, uh, what we find out about the user um, is then it, we are able to individualize content. And of course, what machine learning can do, it can process and analyze very large volumes of data, and it can um, combine these into the clusters, uh, interest profiles, etc. The productivity of publishers or companies increasing this um, productivity. Okay, we've heard about this, and then we have content management, social media uh, uh, translations, and then what I find interesting, AI can help to improve the quality of content, so I don't have to look for plagiarisms. So uh, AI can create plagiarisms, but at the same time, it can also recognize these. And of course, we're all uh, commercial companies. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, monetization of content is also important because we all have to pay the rent at the end of the day. So pricing, in particular, important in e-commerce. AI can help us in this respect. The last field is the distribution of content. What channels can I use to reach which uh, target groups? In marketing, uh, there's the phrase, uh, reaching the right people at the right time through the right channels. Of course, these things can be done. Uh, the subject of uh, combating fake news uh, and encouraging the content of journalism. Um, uh, uh, creating content quicker and on a larger scale. That can be a, an advantage and a disadvantage. So these are ideas of what KR, AI can do in publishing in general. And the interesting aspect about this is that these are not ideas of Mr. Meyer, but this is this is the input of a prompt. What influence does AI have on publishing in, in chat GPT? And the answer, so AI provides me with re relatively relevant replies in terms of the question, what influence does AI have on publishing? This, what I've said up to, date, up to now, is very general. And now I would like to pick out a few uh, things from our personal working environment and to look at them in more detail. So a, a question to the audience, who has already worked with ChatGPT or experimented with ChatGPT or other um, uh, tools or other forms of AI? That's a, a considerable number. And now the second question, who makes regular use of AI? Yeah, an impressive number, an impressive number of people. Uh, we asked our community because we always want to look at the current status in terms of use of chat GTPT. So we have a, a hype situation. Everyone's talking about chat GTPT, about um, AI. We you can can no longer open LinkedIn without finding masses of content from various sources. So we have to look at the content to see what levels are, are people working on. But uh, if we don't have any personal experience in Web3, uh, some people uh, by their nature have no experience. So we asked our community, what about your use? And the first answer didn't surprise me. 92% of our community make use of AI, but do not use it regularly. So uh, we can talk ab about a hype, but really uh, the, the aspect is being used for productivity purposes. Our community is relatively communicative. Of course, it, we pr received a lot of feedback. And I found it interesting to see here how these these individual ideas are, are viewed. Chat GPT better than its reputation. Depending on the question, people are um, overtaxed. Some people find it totally uh, stupid. Uh, that's, and but the main challenge, I think, will be 
to to re retain control over AI and to ask critical questions about everything. That's a very topical discussion that's ongoing. Uh, yesterday, the boss of Google said we have to look more closely at what's going on in the background, and he said uh, we must do this. So now, as I promised, I want to look at the pragmatic examples of how this is used, and based on our practical experience, I want to show you what's going on. We have a weekly newsletter, DPR weekly uh, it, my role uh, is to look from an international publishing perspective to look at what's being published to summarize the content and to produce an article that's so you have to understand what uh, the matter is about. Sometimes you use DeepL to accelerate. Then I have to read the content, summarize it, and then I maybe write five or six lines on the topic. So for Abstracts uh, newsletter, we have 50 uh, um, editions. So over a year, that uh, accounts for roughly 67 hours. And then ChatGPT came along. And so so I, I use a certain prompt. And please uh, summarize in seven cents and don't use or use the following words. I enter the link or perhaps some original text. My role then is subsequently to read through this to say, look, is it does it sound plausible? Is it more or less okay? And then to forward this to production. So my workload with AI is roughly 6.7 hours. Uh, I've calculated this uh, at a, an hourly wage of 25 uh, euros, and that I come up with 1,507 euros per annum. So for a publisher, that's a, a lot of money at first glance, but it's not that much really because the real decisive factor is A, I save 60 hours, that's one week for me, so I save one um, complete week where I can do other things, and the technology costs for this are, are naught. So this is just to I provide an example of how this can be calculated with a very small um, unit. Then we've carried out other experiments. And what we also do now is, for example, if we publish uh, articles or abstracts and create abstracts through chat GPT, we add these at the end. We don't change these. We deliberately don't change them so that people can see what is the summary. What we do, which unfortunately not everyone does, is we do this um, by hand. So everything that, that, that we do with AI is classified, it's presented in a transparent manner so that you can see what's going on. And you can see here sometimes AI d does what it wants, irrespective of what we tell it. So. Um, for example, te my texts are described articles, described texts, and this text uh, then produces uh, the answer the article concerns itself with. So that's it doesn't recognize the relationship between text and article, and then you get this type of, of sentence and the summaries. In the beforehand, we had summaries of content or here, summary of articles uh, that works uh, outstandingly well. I've had articles written using a prompt. Um, give, give me the five benefits and disadvantages of a certain product for a company. Uh, uh, it, as we can see, it, it, it works. Uh, it really works surprisingly well, and I'm I'm talking about CGPT 3 and 5, not about the uh, highly complex version 4, but for the um, normal staff. So the result is extremely good. What I've also done 
and what works quite well is to formulate forwards on the basis of lists of content. So chat G I GBT says, I said to chat GBT, write a forward for a magazine with the following content. Then it takes the uh, table of contents and shives, writes a nice forward. These are, pr are pretty good. And in this field, uh, we've seen a couple of low-level examples from our daily work. And of course, uh, media companies are very active in this area. For example, the uh, Funke Group of very individualized e-papers, which they use with, K with AI. And th this is the, the wet dream of many uh, newspaper publishers to provide, to supply individualized newspapers. Uh, now, digital digitization seems to make this possible. Here are some examples of other things that are going on. For example, print uh, circulations, the planning of circulation. There's a project trend radar. Uh, Herda is involved, LED is involved. So large publishing companies, large dealers that simply look uh, on the, look on the basis of past I events, uh, how the circulation has been, how, m how many have they been able to sell. They take lots of um, relevant information which they use in terms of trend research. What would be the right target circulation level for the project product? And the reason is, of course, storage costs, paper costs, um, eliminating unnecessary costs. What's been going on for a long time is to enrich meter data, to generate meter data. Very difficult for many publishers. And if AI is able to do this and also produces sensible results, then that uh, is a great help. Then another um, aspect where there's lots of experimentation is churn prevention. So this is basically about I using certain factors to identify that in 13 months, Mr. Bayer will terminate his subscription for this and this reason. So we have to uh, react with reactivation campaigns, etc. And here, too, AI um, is, is now being used. I'm going to go through the individual forms of media, AI and audio, text, translating these automatically into languages. We heard Mandarin. Um, uh, another example in the uh, area of um, he hearing books, audio books. If I were a publisher with audio books, then I would uh, like to know what Google is doing. These uh, audio rated books, text is entered, and then you get an audio book um, prepared for you. Um, we have the fact that there are, we talked about the machine voice. Obviously, there's a lot of potential for improvement here, but these uh, creating an audio book and this uh, this AI is very good in this respect. Here too, in the field of process optimization, the E interface software or podcasters are use are happy about the uh, AIs which uh, uses uh, format and the umlauts uh, are eliminated. I talked to a colleague uh, from Bavaria recently. He was very happy by the fact that AI, although he sees AI critically, a using AI in this respect is something he finds very good. In radio, there are initial experiments in terms of uh, uh, having AI support complete radio shows. And uh, some um, broadcasting companies have uh, launched the radio ad maker. And the situation with these is that you say, I, I will enter a couple of keywords, a time period, and then the AI will prepare a radio advertising for you and 
which will then be broadcast at the right time. The only thing you have to do is to say, my company is called such and such. This is my project. This is my project. I would like to offer this for a certain length of time. And here's PayPal. That's all you have to do. And in another area being discussed very critically is, is motion pictures and pictures. Uh, 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 used a lot in it with infographics. Many graphic designers are not sure. Um, they used to earn a lot of money sit, sitting on a, on an information graphics for two or three days. But now, now, if it can be done by AI, they're not so sure. Uh, uh, now, some products can now produce very realistic. Pro photos. So, if you have uh, product photos, um, you you don't have to travel to fly to New York anymore because you can use AI to produce very realistic photos from different areas. Adobe has now followed up. Uh, Adobe Firefly, um, which is uh, legally very secure, and I think I think. Uh, I, I did some experiments in the last few days, and this produces very good results. And what I wanted to say is there are other uh, products such as Microsoft Image Ping Creator. So I get this, I cr use this to create cat content. Uh, I entered a prompt, uh, a, a cat as a mad scientist. And then the the result came out. So first of all, I defined the object, the cat, and then I decided how should this work, in what style, and then this is the result that you get. So picture creation uh, was no problem in terms of preparing this presentation. It was quite fun. And if Microsoft now introduces uh, AI, then I will no longer have to prepare presentations. AI will do this all for me. Whether ChatGPT uh, with stable diffusion in recent months, the word artificial intelligence has not made headlines not only in the technical sector. If you listened carefully, you would have noticed the problems that AI has in terms of mixing language. So these are buzzwords. AI uh, is implemented uh, in the German. Then the subject of AI and quality, uh, the making uh, the principle of plausible rubbish. This sometimes is. It causes problems and sometimes uh, uh, invents. Uh, one, one good example, one, one of my colleagues was almost stoned for this. We did something for libraries, and then I uh, entered um, libraries. The article was quite good. We had a pod podcast, and I thought, OK, carry on. Then let's ask GPT what podcast exists for libraries. A couple of answers came out, City uh, Library Frankfurt, another university library. This all sounded very plausible. I sent it, sent it to my colleagues who checked and found that none of these libraries actually existed. So we have we n need to know this, so don't trust any source that you don't, you have not yourself checked. Or the a couple of things. I don't know if you can read this, but uh, of course, you try to play around with AI and to see what can be done with it. And so I said, give me the following recipes with the following. Uh, um, ingredients, paprika, tomatoes, uh, entered uh, crispy um, uh, crisp bread. That was ignored. And then there was uh, marmalade. So uh, it produced a raspberry uh, marmalade with sultanas. And at the end, it came out with uh, raspberry marmalade and vegetables. So. It's correct, but 
I won't do, do this. Uh, uh, I'm not going to make raspberry marmalade using vegetables, but this shows us clearly how the machine works. It doesn't uh, take the human approach and establish associations uh, where it says, are you crazy, vegetable marmalade? But it just, just produces this. So that was what is going on in publishing, what we are doing or try experimenting with at present, what's going on in terms of development with various media forms. And now I will now like to look at things from a bird's eye perspective. Um, in terms of hype, OK, back in the past, we had similar developments when iPhones were introduced. We had uh, similar discussions with the first iPhones, which is now some time in the past. Steve Jobs was not the first person to introduce smartphones onto the market. On the contrary, but he actually was the one that did it properly. Open AI, uh, use, looking at how AI can be implemented in a chat with a chatbot, of course, this has uh, broken down certain barriers, certainly against the background that it's, it's, it's interesting. But one of the first AI applications was a chatbot. Joseph Weizenbaum uh, quietly and unnoticedly in the 1960s. He would have been 100 uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So this shows us how old the technology is. This was a chatbot application on a, in a very primitive form based on very primitive uh, rules. But ultimately, the mechanism, you can talk as if with a, a person and in case this was broke down major barriers. Now you can no longer open up LinkedIn or similar without seeing some new AI tool. Of course, this has resulted in an explosion of creativity and tools. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a good thing. Lots of startups are uh, carrying out many uh, very impressive uh, experiments. Uh, but, of course, the question arises as to this gold, what will be the consequence of this gold digger period that we have at the moment? What will uh, happen if we are constantly digging in the sand? And here I would like to go into some detail, in particular in the publishing environment. I, I don't know whether it's uh, only media people, but as soon as something new comes along, then I say, well, will I become, will this make me unemployed? Is AI a job killer? If th this can take over my work as a journalist, then what will I do in the future? The question is justified, but at the same time, to be fair, you have to say that this defining of content is a sort of high quality work. I think with product text, uh, we can think in a similar way, but the day-to-day -day work with content is, is a completely different type of work. And an awful lot of what, of what is done today in journalism it, it basically um, involves writing press releases. I don't think, fortunately, we don't have any journalists here, otherwise I'd be in deep water, but that's the, that's the way it is. There is even a tool that the DPA reports are uh, imported automatically, and you can then determine a style for the article, and that's it. So you have to say, well, a can be a job killer to a certain extent, but it's a double-edged sword. So I would I would not define myself as a journalism in terms of press releases. AI can do that. Uh, it, it provides me with assistance, 
and uh, that, that should be the area where it's used. In terms of disrupting the writing process, yes, in the field of assisting, I gave some examples, and there will be, when, in terms of dealing with this, there will be certain capabilities will be used. The prompt engineering, uh, for example, how do, do I need to talk with the machine to enable it to produce a, a decent result? But okay, that's the way things are. We have to get used to new things if we want to use them, and we 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 can see that if we want uh, a, a decent result with certain products, perhaps you have to experiment for two weeks and with Adobe Firefly, for example. And, but things work pretty well. And overall, in particular in the media field, there are many people who have the opportunity to publish, which they didn't have in the past. And you could find this good or bad. This $176,000 in passive income. In today's video, I'll show you how to launch a similar business, starting from generating the book idea, the main content, to high quality illustrations, and all of that by using the power of AI technology. So if you're interested in making passive income, keep watching until the end, because I promise this video will contain valuable information you'll not find anywhere. Yeah, of course. That I cannot. I can only recommend that you look at this video. It's very American in terms of money, uh, less effort. But I, I won't show this complete video. But behind this is a very detailed introduction of how a cinema book can be made with Chat GPT. Looked relatively good, and Amazon now offers uh, a product where you can you work yourself as a publisher. It's not that I used to have the audio. I mentioned that the audio publisher should be content, and I don't not predicting the demise of all uh, book publishers, but. Uh, now, we won't lose all these companies, but on the fringes, uh, you are seeing uh, constantly more and more things coming up, and we should keep an eye on these because at the moment, in this hype period, we're talking about content creation. Um, for example, in the field of e-commerce, product, the generation of product data, generation of metadata, and et cetera, et cetera in the chatbot area in customer service, AI will play a major role. And those of you who have had dealings with the chatbot of a major Ger a German telecom corporation, well, K AI can only get better, so it won't be, it won't be a pity. Um, in, with programming, uh, AI assists. Um, so I can't just say build me a web shop. That is not yet possible, but at least AI can give us an, an assisting function so that people like me with two, two left hands can, can put something together quite effectively. Because uh, that's, we're ignoring that at the moment because we're too, concentra too concentrated too much on content creation or, for example, with an interface to Expedia, ChatGPT has an enormous number of plugins to shop providers, etc., or to Expedia, so that you can uh, you can have a fairly easy journey on, on a chat basis. Ultimately, this all the the question comes down to what AI does is. It doesn't um, refine existing things, but it develops them further. So in the past, we had human intelligence, human content, and AI does something with these. Uh, should AI be allowed to do this? So 
so uh, AI y uses things. So here, there is an awful lot of uh, discussion in there are uh, fundamental judgments as well. Um, I regret not having studied law because otherwise this would have kept me busy for the next 20 years, but at least something is going on. For example, the AI but fair um, campaign, this is from the media uh, sector, where you can say AI is okay, it's, it's a useful tool, but at some stage we have to participate. They're working with our data. Then there is the Vienna Declaration. Um, um, they, people are saying so far and no further. Um, and then there is a lot uh, going on at EU level. Uh, International Cyber Resilience Act, the Machine uh, Regulation and the AI Act. This is interesting uh, when you look at all the places where AI is being used. This is very interesting. Content creation is a nice tool, but uh, what about robotics uh, in surgery, for example? So we need rules. Otherwise, I would not like to have an operation with the help of AI. And then, for example, Wired and Guardian, as a further example, Wired is, was one of the first publications that uh, created rules and defined how we will deal with the content. And the Guardian uh, was such that uh, scienti scientists uh, said that ChatGPT gives me articles as a source, but I can't find them. And then the colleagues from the gardens noticed that uh, people are finding articles from us that don't actually exist. How do we deal with this? So things are going on, but from a legal perspective, um, uh, between the legal uh, decisions and then actual things are actually happening that will take a long time. And then the second edge of the sword, the creation of fake news. At the weekend, a colleague of mine uh, used Journey to take a photo. Uh, astronauts on the Apollo mission, and we saw an astronaut behind the camera filming the other astronauts. So the claiming that the moon landing had never taken place. So in terms of uh, this is a, cons a great an El Dorado for conspiracy theorists. But at the same time, we talked about AI as a job killer for journalism. But valid sources that I trust will become increasingly important in the future. Uh, AI and the black swans. Just a, a brief, brief example, double-edged sword. What we he show here is an app with AI. It does something which I could have used when my children were younger. It scans in a, a pile of Lego and then makes suggestions in terms of what I can do with this. It's a nice application. But it's exactly the same tool as used for face rec facial recognition, the same technology, and facial recognition um, uh, can, of course, be used for uh, 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 oppressive activity. So this is a double-edged sword. Uh, also, the subject of how many decisions do I transfer to AI? Uh, a year ago, uh, the, the press reported on Amazon, on decisions that Amazon been taking by AI. Then some journalists uh, went into more detail and found that, that the situation is not as bad. But they looked uh, they were looking at people not meeting their norms in uh, logistics. So the question is, what will happen in the future? AI and the end? Uh, not a question for me. I don't know what will happen. But Sam Altman uh, adopted a very pragmatical approach. 
uh, and the, the world will uh, demise, but until then, AI will uh, um, create good business. You can agree or not agree. The situation will remain interesting. I hope my brief journey through the opportunities for AI in the media area was entertaining and uh, brought you valuable information. My advice, remain critical and curious, but maintain a good level of information. And now I wish you plenty of enjoyment with the further presentations at the print day. Okay, I have two more things. Uh, I posted this on LinkedIn, and there were many comments with uh, terrible. So uh, I uh, uploaded a portrait portrait of myself. You see, I I, li I prefer black shirts and black jackets. I in I introduced some text and said generate a video, and this is the result. It's okay, but if uh, you can use this to uh, generate introductions. So I think perhaps at the next print day, a year and a half from today, we will see various things in this area. Thank you very much for your for listening. And one thing I would like to add, then then I'll be finished. No wor don't worry. If anybody is particularly interested in applications in chat GPT, uh, this is something we published last week. A lot of people were involved in this, AI and also people. And you can download this free of charge. It's a PDF. Uh, the link takes you straight to the PDF. No address information will be requested. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Meyer. We will now actually break for um, eight minutes, but Mr. Meyer will be available for questions. You stay around. Die Aufmerksamkeit, viel Spaß mit dem Kaffee und so weiter. Und wir sehen uns.